Can you share your philosophy on when to listen to experts? How should one navigate disagreements from experts in the same field or between different fields? What are common blind spots for experts? Whew. Yeah. Um, um, I would say, yeah, it's not as simple as when to listen to experts. You know what? There's actually another experts question, so mm -hmm. let me just read that one okay. t as well um, so that we can sure. just try to lump these together. Are we living in the age of experts or in the age of socially driven content? Why do you find one or the other more preferential? I don't think that's a complete solution set. I would hope. Yeah, I think um, there's a we've got a an expertise problem, which is that our experts very frequently aren't expert, right? And so there are many cases you would want to listen to experts on coronavirus, but our experts suck; they're corrupt, and so because they're corrupt, you can't afford to or or too narrowly trained. So they don't know what they think they know. Let's put it this way. I, I think that's a problem. We got narrow training. We've got, um, you know, biases in the types of error that we prefer. Mm -hmm. These biases are themselves corrupt because we don't want to disrupt certain kinds of business, even if it causes us to massively disrupt others. Um, and in some sense, you have to go with the individual is trustworthy. And one of the things that the individual being trustworthy is about is do they tell you what the limits of their knowledge are or tell you how they would know if this was wrong, mm -hmm. right? To the extent that some expert wants to assure you of the right answer so you can turn off your brain, they're probably no good. And I'm trying to remember what the example was. You and I got something, oh, I got something wrong a couple of live streams ago. It was was it about? I had it just a second ago. It was about... Oh, oh was yeah. it adaptive immunity and vertebrates? It was about how far back adaptive immunity went. Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm highlighting this is, yep, I'm an expert in biology. I got this biological thing wrong. But if you look at the conversation that surrounded it, I told you where I suspected my logic was probably going to upend me. Mm -hmm. And I gave you the things that pointed in the direction of the other answer. Right. And the point is, that's what you want, is somebody who's willing to show their work enough that at the point they do get it wrong, A, they'll say so, B, you'll see how they got there, C, you can figure out what the consequence of the error will be. In other words... That's what show your work is for. Yeah, show your work is so that you can evaluate all of those things. And to the extent, look, you may be in a different position than I am. And it may be that although I think this is the right answer, if I show my work, then you can say, even if that is probably the right answer, the risk of the other answer is so substantial, I'm going to hedge against it. Mm -hmm. So anyway, yeah, somebody so, who will show their work is, yeah. is what you're looking for. So in terms of navigating disagreements, um, you know, too often, you know, especially if it's talking heads, it's mainstream media, and you get, you know, 30 seconds to three minutes at the most to explain a point, there's no... There's no tolerance built in for any kind of explanation, nuance, hedging, any of it. And, you know, hedging in this case, I mean entirely positively saying, you know, okay, I think this, but these are the things that would, that would cause me to have to rethink that conclusion. Like you, you want to, you want evidence that anyone is who you might listen to has both the capacity to do that sort of analysis and does it on the regular. And also... And you know this is going to be tougher to be revealed. Will um, will come back and correct the record if they turn out to have been wrong about something substantive. Not you know every single little little error, but you know anything big. They'll come yeah. back. They'll make an effort. Um, you know just just like newspapers do or claim to, right? Like they publish corrections. Yep. Like this this is what you must do if you are speaking with you know, with the ability to change how people behave and therefore what outcomes will happen, you you absolutely need to be responsible to your own reputation because you are responsible for other people's choices and lives. Yep. Uh, uh, last thing I would say yeah. is biggest red flag, might be that there's a bigger red flag, but as far at the moment, I think the biggest red flag for me is appeals to authority, especially somebody's appeal to their own authority. Right. In other words, if somebody wants to wave their degree in front of your face as evidence that they know what they're talking about, they probably don't. Right. Oh, so one thing, man, have I known a lot of dim PhDs. A lot of dim PhDs. So dim. We now, so we, lazy. We have, so incompetent. Wrecked the meaning of the degree by giving them out 
rather than paying people to do the work of the university. So mm -hmm. it's not to say that it's not relevant that somebody has one, right? Or that somebody has it in their signature file, as I think I do at this point. Mm -hmm. But the point is, does it stand in for an actual argument, right? right? Will somebody wield their PhD because they don't have an argument, right? Rather than it being just, you know, who is making the argument? Yeah, okay, they have a degree in such and such a thing, okay. right? It tells you something about what they're It allows with. you a first pass, like, okay, then, you know, th th maybe maybe they have thought deeply about this thing yep. on which they are now speaking. Yeah, but somebody who pulls rank just based on degrees or institutions or whatever it is, is almost certainly covering for something. Yeah. Um, why, there's... There's a lot more to say here, but I'm, I'm sure we will come back to the question of expertise and authority and what it actually means to have a degree in a relevant field and what a relevant field might be. Um, but I guess one more thing, you know, as much as a PhD in science for, you know, for academics um, is often trotted out by people saying, well, you know, I, my PhD is in science, therefore it sort of, you know, trumps yours. You know, there is this hierarchy, usually implicit, but sometimes even explicit within, you know, between academic fields. Um, but unfortunately, many, many, many so-called scientists now, many people who have PhDs in the sciences aren't actually doing science and if asked, couldn't really describe to you what science is. They describe the results of some scientific method, the, you know, the actual products, the outcome, which is not the science. That's the results of the science. Yeah. And the fact that people who are claiming to be scientists can't tell you what science is should be a big red flag. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. If they're uninterested in uh, the process and how it's sensitive to certain kinds of um, of error, then they're probably not yeah. very good at it. Or as one um, so-called scientist who I once taught with announced to our class, well, I used to think that hypotheses were important, but now I know better. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. My hypothesis is that he was overpaid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Indeed. Yes.